Greetings. As Memorial Day is vastly approaching to us, and as I reflect back to my days in the Army, I thought I'd share a little bit about my time I did serve in the Army. Uh, it all started on August 25th, 1965, when I received a letter from President Johnson saying, Greetings. You are hereby inducted into the Armed Forces of the United States and to report to Los Angeles on September 7th, 1965. Uh, that left me two weeks before uh, I had to say goodbye to everybody and leave civilian life. And now I belong to the U.S. government for two years. So this is that story. So, they sent us off to Fort Pope, Louisiana. There was eight weeks of intense training. Their job, the changes from a civilian to a soldier. They were quite good at it. Those sergeants yell at us all the time. Even when we were doing nothing wrong, they would yell at us. We learned whatever they told us to do, we did without question, which ended up being very important when you were out in combat, when they gave you a command, you were to follow it, not sit there and debate whether or not you should do what they tell you. So basic training, was very intense. It was the hardest time in my whole military two years. But at the end of it, I felt like a soldier. I looked like a soldier and I felt good about myself. Most of our training was involved with learning how to march and we marched and we marched and we marched. We had time to fool around too, where I was wearing my gas mask here. My good friend, John Craig, he was the first guy I ran into with the Christian. We had formations all the time in front of the barracks. Everything had to be perfect. And when they said take five, we would collapse and almost fall asleep because we were always exhausted. We were exhausted because training like this with the bayonet was very intense. Our rifle training, we had to learn how to be a good shooting rifle. And I became very good at it. And we carried our rifle everywhere we went. And when we had bivouac, we went camping. That was a kind of a fun time. I enjoyed that. Here we learned how to pitch tents, how to live out in the wilderness. And we had some goof off time where I got the guys stand together like we had a firing squad. So we did goof off every now and then. And then it was off to Redstone Arsenal where I was going to be trained on how to be an ammunition specialist. This was the most enjoyable time of my training. This was at Huntsville, Alabama. And you could see that it was snowing uh, part of the time. It was the first time I experienced a uh, snowfall being Southern California down in San Pedro. And I enjoyed myself there. I, I was involved at the chapel. I taught Sunday school, I made a lot of friends. I even uh, was the best man at one of the guy's weddings. I was home and it was at, I didn't get to go home for Christmas and this little tree that I made up for my Christmas tree. So then finished that training and we had two weeks of leave before I was off to Vietnam. Okay, I was home on leave and this was kind of strange because um, my friends and family, when they looked at me, they had this look on their face like maybe you might not see me again because I was going off to war. And when somebody goes off to war, it's possible that they might not come home. So those two weeks, I enjoyed myself. I met with all my friends, so I spent a lot of time with Sherry. And uh, then we had to say our goodbyes. And it was uh, always sad, but I and my mind knew I was going back. So it was leaving home and off to Vietnam. So before I knew it, I was on a jet and we're on our way to Vietnam. Now, Vietnam was very hot and sticky for a California guy. The humidity was always 100%. You're sweating all the time. It took me about a month before I adapted to the weather. Uh, while I was there, I was at uh, the 550th uh, 
ammunition supply point. Our job was to supply certain infantry units with ammo. Very important job because if you don't have ammo, you cannot fight the battle. You could go without food, but you can't go without ammo. On my, anytime I had some time off, I would go into town, which at that time we, uh, I was able to go into Saigon. We were close to it my first few months. And I tried to learn the people's customs, uh, learn a little bit their language. I tried to be kind of like a missionary while I was in town and try to spread that Americans were not a bunch of uh, sex maniac guys, but uh, there were some of us that were good guys. Of course, we also had to fight a war, and here I am uh, after a, a night of battling the Viet Cong when they tried to attack our ammo dump. We did have some fun times. Fourth of July, we had a big barbecue. There was 30 of us in our ammo unit, and um, we got along pretty good together. At first, I was the only Christian in the group, uh, but before I left, there was about five. I can't say I was responsible, but um, it did make things a little better. This is my friend Armando Martinez, who was uh, from San Pedro. We even had a lunch wagon come out to the dump. Now it's dry sandwiches and warm soft drinks, but uh, it was interesting. Of course, I had to do manual labor, mixing cement, and uh, in the background, a little tower there. I was building that. That was going to be our watchtower. For a few months, we lived in this villa outside Saigon, Chinese section of the town of Cholong. Uh, it was a little different from the tents, but security was, you had to really be tight because we weren't in the base camp anymore. So, right across the street, there was a doctor's uh, house. They had a little nice place. And outside, the kids were always there waiting when we were leaving, coming, hoping that we'd give them some candy, treat, something like that. They were always there. And there's a lot of explosions that happened around there, so it was not very pleasant. Then Billy Graham came to town, and I got to meet him, uh, George Deborah Shea, and Cliff Barrels, and even Billy Graham. So that was kind of a, a highlight, being able to uh, meet Billy Graham in person. He said it was the noisiest place he ever gave a sermon because jets were taking off constantly. And here I am, uh, shaking hands. I said, thanks for coming. He said, no, thank you for being here for us. In Saigon, they always had souvenir stands all over the place. And this was what the traffic was like. Uh, you could see mostly bikes and power bikes. Here's a Sunday family outing. The guy actually had six people on that bike. Here's their version of Kentucky Fried Chicken. I'm, I'm not sure that was chicken. More of the traffic in and around Saigon. A family all dressed up going somewhere. A local barber giving a haircut to a baby. And just a view of uh, what traffic in the city was like. Down in Saigon, this was the Imperial Palace. Saigon was the Pearly Orient in its day. This is the U.S. Embassy where I was staying with my 007 sweatshirt, where two years later in the Tet offense, they would overtake that, the economy would overtake that building. Here are some kids that were selling pets, and that was, uh, you know, they're always selling something. But most of the young women were always selling their bodies, and I went down, and these two girls here were prostitutes. And when we were in, in Saigon, we always had to wear civilian clothes. This was Amanda Martinez, who ended up being an uh, 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 usher in my wedding, and good friend Charlie B. He was the first Christian that came along. And here's transportation where he was going in and out of uh, Saigon. Saigon was a very fascinating city. Um, people felt safe there, away from the war, uh, at least at this stage. You can see they went about their normal day of life selling products. They had a lot of street vendors here selling flowers. Schoolgirls off the school on their bikes. Like I said, that was, that was the main transportation bikes. And you just could see the garb that people wear. It was, it was a kind of clothes they wore in Vietnam. This was the Saigon River. 
right in Saigon. Then I had uh, one week of uh, vacation in Tokyo, which I really enjoyed. That was a fun time. I got to see the Dodgers who were playing an exhibition game with the Tokyo Giants. That was a highlight of the trip. And here I am with a tour group that uh, there in the back. And then it was off to Tainan when I came back, which was, oh, about two, a two hour drive from uh, Saigon. It was uh, the main infiltration route that the Viet Cong used to come in from Cambodia into Vietnam. So we were going to a very more intense battle place. Along the road, uh, we had these convoys taking supplies to uh, uh, Tang Yen with ammo and food. And along the way, uh, here's the rice paddies uh, during the day. It looks nice and peaceful at night. And this kind of battles went on. Along the way, the kids would hopefully would throw them some food. This is where we're heading, the Black Virgin Mountain. Tang was right on the base of that mountain. This was a rubber tree plantation uh, along the way. And more rice paddy and the Black Virgin Mountain. Water buffalo. And area of Yotin. You can see the waterways. That was a, a big transportation. How uh, they get around on the waterways in little boats like this. And this is my forklift. I've been driving it. That was my baby there for the last uh, four months in Vietnam. Tan was very intense. We had battles there um, almost nightly. Motor attacks. Uh, it was quite intense. Uh, while I was in town, I, I bought a pet monkey. This was our pet monkey. And uh, we had a lot of fun with it. When I left Vietnam, uh, of course I couldn't take it with me, so I left it behind. So after Vietnam, uh, they sent me off to um, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, home of the 82nd Airborne. And while I was there, uh, Detroit riots broke out in 67, and I was just about going to be sent there when they got that under control. And then a month later, the Six-Day War in Israel broke out. And on the sixth day, we were getting ready to mount planes to take off to assist the Israelis, but they stopped the war themselves. So that was my time in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. So I got my honorable discharge. So that's my army story. As I look back over all these years, I have no regrets about being drafted. I am proud that I was a soldier and served my country. Uh, when I see the American flag, I tear up. I'm so proud of it. And all the military people that have served from the American Revolution to now, that so many of them gave their lives, that we will have the freedoms we have in this country. So many of us who go to church every Sunday don't think about how we have the freedom of religion. I know so many people know about the freedom of speech, and we have so many other freedoms that we need to thank those who have served this country the thought that we would have those freedoms. So this Memorial Day, when you see a veteran, be sure to say thank you for their service, and thank you for all those who have served. God bless you.